So today I'm here at Steckert Machine Company. I'm here with my buddy Jerry from State Machine Tools. We are standing outside a coal machine. I wanted you to tell us a little bit, but the interesting thing here, Jerry, is we've got raw castings going in. I can see we got finished parts coming out over there. We're gonna work our way that way, but let's start with this machine first. This is the Miratec MW200. It is a self-contained gantry loaded uh, two axis turning center yep. twin spindle machine. Okay. So, so the raw castings are coming in here, it looks like? Yep. So oh. what we do is the operator takes the raw castings and he loads them onto the um, lift table. Yeah. The lift table will lift them up where the gantry robot will come over and pick up the part. Um, we have a camera on the machine. In order to load and get the correct clocking of the part, we take a picture of the part and send that information to the op 10 spindle so we can orientate. Really? See, now I come from a machining background. I'm used to being the robot in this situation. Yep. I would have to know the timing. I'd have a print. I'd have an angry quality person because I never got it right. And you're telling me with this kind of machine tool, I wouldn't have to worry about that. You wouldn't have to worry at all. Okay. So what it does then is it orientates it, the spindle. Yeah. We clock it in on the datum through the machining of Op10. So everything lines up and it passes it through. After the machine is completed in OP10, there's a turnaround station. We come in and we load it into the OP20 spindle yeah. and we do the machining in the OP20. Okay, so after OP20, it heads out of the machine? Heads out of the machine, but before that, what we do is actually we mark the part. We have a dot matrix printer that we actually mark the part, give it a serial number, a date number, a timestamp on the part so we can track it. So you've got, once it comes out of OP20, you've got full traceability then? Correct. So once it's marked, what's the next stop in the cell? So the next stop after the marking is we have another Fanuc robot, which will pick it up, um, orientate off of the IR vision system, yep. load it into the Toyota 500J horizontal machining center, where we do some secondary operation on the machine. Oh, okay. It's cool. So it, it rotates in, uh, we take the part out, and what we have is a specialized wash system down there to actually wash, rinse, and dry the part. It's a five station wash, rotary comes around. So after that, we can take every 20th piece out and we set it up onto a slide table where we're coming through and actually drop it into a CMM so we can actually measure and get a sampling of the parts coming out of the machine tool. So I, we're gonna walk this way, but so you're telling me I don't have to worry about messing up the rotation. Nope. I don't have to scrub these parts by hand. Correct. I don't have to inspect these parts by hand either because you've got a CMM in the cell that's going to handle all of that. That just blows my mind and I cannot wait to hear more. I'm going to steal that mic from you though. You're done, Jerry. Thank you, all Jerry. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so Jerry was just telling me about all of the quality elements that are handled by all of the optical cameras and everything that's going on the way that it goes to the horizontal, the cleaning center. So how does the CMM play into this? So after the part is marked um, in the, the first process here in the Miratech machine yeah. tool, um, that part now has traceability throughout the horizontal and uh, the machining throughout the horizontal. And then yeah. it transfers over into the uh, CMM where it's going to collect data um, from the CMM to actually um, uh, have that data in our files that we can really? pull that up at any point in time to show the customer what the CMM reports were for that part. Um, and then that part comes through to the operator and the yeah. operator then does more inspection. Um, it, really this operator is more of a quality person at this point in time. They're checking 100% features on all of these parts, um, looking for defects within the part from boundaries, anything porosity, voids. Yeah. Um, really surface finishes and stuff like that that um, the CMM may not catch. Yeah. Um, so they're looking and checking all that stuff offline here from the CMM as well. So uh, really quality, building that quality into the, the part for the end customer and the end user. Yeah, well, and something I noticed here, you've got very large displays up here that, I mean, I see some red, I see some green. So what do the displays show us then? So really the displays are showing us um, uh, features that are, are getting uh, either out of tolerance, close to being out of tolerance, where adjustments need to be made. Okay. So um, really we have this up here to, to really to show you that it's not always problem free. We do have, <laughs> you know, the, the, there is um, data from the CMM that we need to make adjustments on. And yeah. uh, 
then we can go back and really quarantine them parts and get back to point of control. But um, every uh, every part, the data will show up here that's going through the CMM. So. Yeah, well, and something I know with my background in manufacturing is it's not if, but when something goes wrong in manufacturing, it's never problem free. So the fact that you've got visual safe, like visual systems in place, you've got automated CMM inspection every, what is it, one every 15, I think they said. Like you've got all the optics for all the alignments for on your parts, everything else. It just, it brings and it lets the people running the cell focus on where they bring value with the quality, with the surface finishes, with the adjustments and the fine adjustments versus all the material handling that could be there. And then I also noticed you've got a second setup over here. So is that running the exact same thing or how does that work? Actually, the cell can run a couple different part numbers. Of course, they're the same family of parts. Um, okay. They're pretty much twin sisters, uh, just a few differences within them part numbers. But again, it is a line A and B. It is two separate lines. We can yeah. run two separate part numbers at once. But uh, that being said, they are segregated within that line. They go through the same CMM yeah. for, for re reporting reasons, but uh, they come out on individual lines. Um, again, by having all of this automated and having robust equipment and tooling, um, really gives our operators time to put quality, more quality into their parts um, because they can utilize that time and focus mainly on quality. Um, you can definitely, uh, you know, throw out this see Joey in the background, you know, looking over parts and yeah. doing her measurements and everything. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's really, uh, really focusing on quality and moving forward with high tolerances and stuff. That's where we need to uh, integrate our automations and really utilize State Machine for their talents and our partnership uh, goes back many years. I'm sure you yeah. discussed that. Yeah, we've so, we've got so, another uh, video that ties into that a little bit in more detail, uh, where we actually have a video in front of the very first machine that State Machine brought to you all. Uh, so you'll have to look for that as well. Yeah, it's a really exciting. exciting, just a, it's really clear getting to know the team here at State. I mean, you can see it in this cell with all of the automation and the focus on quality is State and SMC and everyone in this partnership they're really clear about what they bring to the table. The end focus is always the customer's needs, which yes. what better place to focus. And then I know everyone here at SMC is also gives a lot of consideration to what the people on the floor, what their day-to-day -day job is like. Absolutely. Yes, without the people, we would, uh, you know, we really have dedicated <laughs> quality employees. We really thrive on that. Yeah. And uh, without the people, this is all meaningless. But And that starts right with our engineering team. You know, the development, the design, the, really the, the, the machining process and how we want to go about it and then sharing that with State Machine and having yeah. their team come in then. But we build all of the, the machine fixture tools in-house here. And, you know, we have really we, a one-stop. We can take a, a blueprint, send out a quote, do, uh, you know, prototype parts, PPAPs, and then uh, turn it into this high-volume production. And, yeah. uh, and bring the quality with that, you know, and, and yeah, robust and process to maintain that. And it, it's a lot of work, but it sounds like a labor of love for a lot of the people here. And it's clear that you're passionate about what you do. Thank you for giving me the inside scoop to that. And uh, make sure you check out more videos from the SMC group. We've been here all day and there's so much I can't wait to share with you. Thank yeah, you. Great. Thank you, Mike. Nice having you. And, uh